Life on Earth is a balancing act in many ways. Take the air we breathe, for example. Animals like us breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants pretty much do the opposite. When you put these two natural processes together, it forms a balancing act that has allowed our atmosphere to support life for hundreds of millions of years. But with all the new sources of carbon dioxide that we've introduced relatively recently, like planes, trains, automobiles, and power plants. We're now putting more CO2 into our atmosphere than the Earth's carbon cycle can absorb. And so, a balancing act that has lasted hundreds of millions of years is now out of balance, resulting in a net gain of atmospheric CO2. That increase in CO2 has many ramifications, including climate change, sea level rise, and ocean acidification, just to name a few. In order to reverse these trends and mitigate the damage, We'll need to reduce our fossil fuel use on one hand and increase our planet's capacity to absorb CO2 on the other. Most of us are aware that trees and other terrestrial plants are a big part of the carbon cycle, but we may not be aware that more CO2 is absorbed by life in the ocean than by life on land. We call this CO2 absorbed by ocean organisms blue carbon. When we think of blue carbon mechanisms, we commonly think of the plants, mangroves, kelp, seagrass, and saltwater marshes and microorganisms like plankton. What doesn't get much consideration is the role of all that marine life in the middle, the fish, the mammals, the turtles, and other marine vertebrates. These animals play a vital role in how the ocean absorbs carbon. Here's how. Marine vertebrates keep coastal habitats healthy. When we take away the vertebrates, mangroves, kelp, and seagrasses can suffer due to unchecked grazing and burrowing by herbivores. These plants absorb way more carbon per acre than land forests. Because denser particles sink, many nutrients end up at the bottom of the ocean. Whales and fish physically mix the water column by swimming vertically through the oceans, providing nutrients to plants at the surface, plants that absorb carbon. Whales have another ocean mixing trick. They feed at one level and, well, poop at another. Because whales poop at the surface, this process moves nutrients from the deep water where they feed to waters where microorganisms like plankton can thrive and absorb carbon. Whales not only mix up the water column, they mix things up horizontally as well. Whales travel thousands of miles, feeding and producing waste products along the way. Whale fecal matter stimulates plankton production, and we know that plankton is a major consumer of CO2. This horizontal mixing allows more plankton to thrive at lower latitudes. When other marine vertebrates consume carbon-based food, they essentially repackage it. Some of that waste product sinks to the bottom, where it is permanently sequestered or retired from the carbon cycle. Some fish, like tuna, halibut, and herring, produce calcium carbonate as waste product, which can potentially offset the effects of ocean acidification. Marine vertebrates store carbon the same way forests do, as biomass, with larger individuals storing proportionally greater amounts over prolonged time scales. When large marine vertebrates die and sink to the bottom, they bring with them lots of carbon in their bodies. Once on the ocean floor, some of that carbon gets buried and is retired from the carbon cycle. It's important to consider the role that each element of nature plays in this complex balancing act of life on Earth. And when we consider marine vertebrates, we should consider them more than just a food source. They play a key role in keeping the ocean healthy. And because they actually increase the ocean's capacity to absorb carbon, they play a key role in keeping the planet healthy.